Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use information on NGS data sheets to calculate NABD88 elevations. So we're going to start with a little spreadsheet that I've set up here for that purpose. I'll pull it over on your screen so you can see it. All right, so got an empty spreadsheet here. I've got four NGS cores that I need to calculate the NAVD88 elevations on. So we're going to go ahead and enter the information that we need for the data sheet in these four columns here, B through E, and then we'll have our calculated NAVD88 elevations over on this side. And I'm going to show you where to find this information on the data sheet. So why do we have to do this? Uh, the reason we have to do this is because NGS does not publish NAVD88 88 elevations on most data sheets, even for cores. Uh, but they do publish ellipsoid heights and geode heights from which we can calculate the NAVD 88 elevation. And you're going to see, you know, you're probably kicking around a couple tenths as you move uh, across the United States, um, or even more. I've, I've seen as much as a half a foot. Um, so there's a reason that it, NGS doesn't like to publish NAVD 88 elevations on their data sheets. Um, they're just not that good. And they'll hopefully they'll be getting better as we get uh, better geoid models. You know, they're running the GravD project, which should help. Um, but NGS doesn't do differential leveling anymore, and so they just get nervous about publishing accurate elevation values uh, in NAVD88. That doesn't help you if you're a land surveyor and you need accurate <laughs> NAVD88 elevations. So I'm going to show you how you can calculate those from the data sheet. So essentially, NGS puts all the information there that you need to calculate a value. They just don't publish the value directly. So let's go ahead and pull up our first data sheet. So we're going to start with Slack. That's the cores I held in the particular network that we're working on in this video. And I need to do a separate talk about how to read an NGS data sheet, but for now I'm just going to focus on the information that we need to calculate our ellipsoid height. So that information is found here. So the first thing we want is the ellipsoid height, which they give in meters, 64.218. And then we want the ge geoid height, what they call a geoid height. I like the term geoid separation because it just makes more sense to me, which is here, right below geoid height. It tells you the geoid 12B. And uh, it's a negative. You've got to pay attention to that sign. That's going to be important. And there's the ellipsoid height. So let's go ahead and enter those values. So our ellipsoid height in meters is 64.218. And our ellipsoid height, oh, sorry, our geoid separation in meters is a minus, don't forget the sign, 32.583. And in most places in California, this geoid separation is a negative value. Okay, so now because I work in feet and not in meters, we want to do our conversion here. So I'm going to enter the conversion factor 3.2808, 33333. We're going to multiply that times this value here. So this is our ellipsoid height in feet. Then we can copy that value, get our geoid separation here. Now the formula to calculate a orthometric elevation or an NAVD elevation from these values is you take your ellipsoid height minus your geoid height, which in this case is a negative number. So our ellipsoid height is going to get bigger. Okay, so this is our NAVD88 NAVD elevation for this course slack. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you one more. I won't make you watch me do all of these. So the next one on our list is P176. So let's get the data sheet opened. Okay, so our ellipsoid height is right here. 434.347 meters. Our geoid height is here, minus 32.59 from GA 12B. So let's go ahead and enter that data. So our ellipsoid height, 434.347, so it's quite a bit higher. 
It's up in the mountains in the coastal range in California here. And we've got our geoid height, minus 32.59. And if you're working over a small area, these geoid separations aren't going to vary a, a, a whole lot. Okay, and then we can just copy down our formulas. All right, now I'm going to pause the video. I'll drop in these other two values, and then I'll show you how we can check these values we've got in a in a fast static network that I've already processed and adjusted. All right, guys, I got those other values in here. Uh, just point out, ZOA two here is on the coast in the Bay Area of California, so it's got a negative ellipsoid height. Watch the signs on your uh, ellipsoid height and your geoid separation on the data sheet. You don't want to screw those up. And uh, so now I've got these calculated NAVD88 elevations. So how are we going to check those? I'm going to save this spreadsheet. I'll put this spreadsheet online so that you guys can download it uh, as well. And I'll try and link to that in the show notes if I remember. But if not, check check the Redefined Horizons website. So I'm going to pull this spreadsheet over. And I've got a uh, network, static network here that I've adjusted in Trimble Business Center. And I've added those values to another spreadsheet. Let me pull that up. So this is the spreadsheet I use to... This is a spreadsheet that I use to uh, calculate network accuracy on uh, whenever I do a static network adjustment. And uh, I've, I show this in, uh, I think it's the third video in the series of videos I've got on YouTube about processing static data in TBC. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in some values here. So we're going to plug in our record values first. So P176, we've got a 1457.61. P217, we've got a 224.30. And ZOA2, we've got a 21.27. So those are my calculated record elevations for these four cores from the NGS data sheets. Now we want to plug in the values that we got from our static network. So let me do that. If you guys can't see some of this stuff, it's because I'm running two monitors. Let me pull this back over, spreadsheet over where you can see it. So I'm just going to pull the values out of TBC. Uh, you won't be able to see that. It's on my other screen here. But So we're going to plug in our measured values here. So P176. P217. And ZOA2. All right, guys. Uh, I had a slight mistake in my spreadsheet. Well, <laughs> it wasn't a slight mistake. It was a big mistake. <laughs> I was uh, subtracting column D here, and I needed to subtract column E. So I've got some new values here that look a little bit better. I'll tell you how you can check that to make sure your formula is right. Uh, in TBC, uh, when you – let me just show you. In TBC, uh, when you pick one of the points in your network, so let's say ZOA2, um, it will calculate an elevation based on the geoid model. You know you should be close to that, okay? So, for example, here I'm 95.39. So we should be within a few tenths of that in our spreadsheet. So let's just go look. That's a good check on your formula. And and we are. We're a couple hundreds. So that tells me that this formula is right. Those other values I have are way off. So I knew I, knew I had a bust in my formula or I took the wrong information off the data sheet. All right, so let's, uh, let's do this again now that I don't have a boo-boo in my spreadsheet. So we're going to replug in these measureds now that I have the right formula. All 
All right. Oh, I put those in the wrong column. Let's try this column over here. These are the records. Yeah, I still got something goofed up. What I do here? Oh, I didn't copy my formula down. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, so again, these values here are coming out of my spreadsheet. Okay, so then we can compare. That should be flat because I held it. We hit 1400s here, two tenths there. Now, obviously, I got a typo here in one of these values. So uh, for uh, P217, so let's just double check some stuff here. So I got 150.29, and I've got 345.38 measured. That's probably wrong, so let's just double check it. So I'm going to come over here to my TBC project, and let's see, P217, 345.38 is what I'm measuring. Okay, so that's right. So well, we might have grabbed the bad value off of our data sheet here. So this should be 345, not 150. It's because this isn't a negative. So I did what I told you not to do, which is <laughs> don't forget the, the sign on your geoid separation. So now it's 363.22. That looks like it's a little better. I may not have picked, fixed our problem. Yeah, something's up still. So let's go back and check that data sheet. So this is P217. So let's pull that up. You can see I don't rehearse these videos. This is like real life, right? So somewhere I got a typo that we got to fix. So let's just check. So my ellipsoid height, I've got 32.451 negative. No, I'm sorry. That's my geoid height. My ellipsoid height is 72.858. So let's make sure that's what we got. And it's not 70. No, that's it. Yeah. Let's see. Let's double check. 78, 72.858. Yeah, I'm off six feet or six meters. 72.858. So that was just a typo on my part. And because these are metric, I'm going to go ahead and bump them out to three places. Same thing here. Three places past the decimal. All right, now I'm at 345.50. That sounds a little better. So let's go back to our other spreadsheet. This is 345.50. All right, so this is what I expect to see here. So eh, we're kicking around about two tenths, 1500s to two tenths in our elevations. Um, so you can see that's why NGS doesn't, uh, they don't publish any VD8 values. Now I could if I held. P176. These would go to this would go to zero. This would go to 600s, and this would go to two tenths. That's probably a better fit. But this is the cores that's closest to my site, so I'm I'm not going to mess with this. These values are, are within the range I expected. Okay, so that is a quick spin through how to calculate NAVD 88 elevations uh, using this spreadsheet and information on the NGS NGS data sheets, and uh, even unintentionally demonstrated a couple mistakes which is watch the sign on your values some of those numbers you're going to deal with are going to be negative and uh, don't make typos when you plug in your values <laughs> and a good check remember you can check this calculated elevation in your tbz project from the geoid you should be within a few tenths of that value or you've got a you've either got a problem in your spreadsheet with one of the formulas or you've got a data entry error uh, when you were taking information off the uh the data sheet so okay that's a little longer than i like these videos to go but uh we were able to wrap everything up in a single video about 15 minutes so i hope you guys enjoyed watching and uh, we'll do some more videos about uh tbc and uh, and ngs data sheets hopefully in the near future